Hello everyone. I know I don't look the best in the world. I have been up all night um, doing various things and one of those things was watching the newest episode of The Mask Singer. So that's what this video right here is about. Um, making these videos on my phone and I'm going to post them after I get done with them. I'm holding my phone right now. Oh look I got a psoriasis in my hair. Anyway I'm holding my phone right now because I don't really have anything to hold it on. I need to get me a tripod. I was going to order one but I haven't done it yet. But anyway still don't have any source of income or a car or you know but anyhow so for episode two of season seven of the mask singer team goods firefly performed first and each character tonight has a mega clue her mega clue was a picture of pharrell williams which did not help me whatsoever i don't know a whole lot about him except for the fact that he was on the voice and I think he was on there one or two seasons, but I don't think that his team ever won, but I could be wrong about that. Anyway, she performed Pretty Young Thing by Michael Jackson, and I kind of feel like she's too tall to be Janet Jackson, but her shoes do have very high heels, and she definitely had Michael Jackson's moves down, so I was like, hmm, it could be her. Um, anyway, she said that Pharrell is one of the major keys in her career and kind of focused on the key. And I don't think that that means that she's Alicia Keys because Alicia Keys was singing as far as I know long before I had ever even heard of Pharrell. So, yeah, I don't think that's connected to that. But anyway, her clues didn't help me at all. Oh, well. <laughs> and so then I have some, um, sort of jotted clues here and there um thingamabob when they were doing a little talk thing said um uh, uh he said quote don't let me bad side fool you don't let me bad side fool you and i was like is he maybe british or irish or scottish himself or something like that but anyway the next one that performed after firefly um, did I mention, by the way, that she said that she was under a lot of pressure being the only member of Team Good that was left? Well, Thingamabob is the only one from Team Cuddly that was left in that group. So, anyway, I think he was the only one from Team Cuddly that was even in that group as far as that goes. Um, so anyway, I don't know how they teamed him up the way that they did. Um, so next up was Cyclops of Team Bad, who sang Suspicious Minds by Elvis Presley, one of my favorite songs. I have a lot of favorite songs, though. And when he was singing, I was like, hmm, he sounds kind of like Billy Ray Cyrus. For one thing, he sounds like his voice is echoing a whole lot in his head, which some of the characters have that. But, hmm, I don't know. Does he sound enough like Billy Ray Cyrus to be real Billy Ray Cyrus, right? So... Um, he said that he, the first week he was just hoping to survive that week and now he's there to have fun. Um, so he seems like a lighthearted kind of comical type guy and his mega clue is a meteor that says it crashed to earth in 1988. He joked it landed in Ken's backyard from a galaxy far, far away in a nook in, um, Ken's backyard from a galaxy far, far away. Well, now this made several of the judges think of, or well, it made Ken and Robin think of Guardians of the Galaxy. It actually made the guest judge, the Eric guy who was hosting the Domino um, Masters show, it made him and me both think of Third Rock from the Sun, but he decided that it was John Lithgow, and I felt more like it was John, uh, sorry, I felt more like it was Joseph Gordon Levitt. There was the map clue, and he played for Jim Hawkins on Treasure Planet, which has maps and a galaxy. And he came from another galaxy as well. <laughs> so, um, and I, rem I reminded myself that Cyclops is also the one that had the compass clue and the villain clue. And we kept talking about being a villain, and I'm like, well, I can't really think of anything that um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt or, well, actually, Justin, Joseph Gordon-Levitt has played for a bad guy in at least one thing. 
couldn't tell you what it is right offhand though. And um, John Lithgow, of course, has played about every role that there is. Um, but I'm like, for the for the villain reason, I don't feel like it is either of them. I feel like it is somebody else. Um, and a person. Whenever I realized about the um, the villain clue being his clue as well. I was like, I mean, it could possibly be Joaquin Phoenix, who recently played the Joker. Hmm. I don't know why the Joker always comes to my mind whenever I'm thinking about a villain, but it does. So next to perform was Ram of Team Bad. Um, he sang Learn to Fly by the Foo Fighters. I thought all of them did a pretty good job um, again tonight. His mega clue was... An award reading, which Nick Cannon did, and was like, the winner is Ram. <laughs> um, it was like an Emmy or something like that. And, you know, they said that they have a whole lot of award winners, AMAs and Emmys and Golden Globes and all sorts of things um, on the show this season. And the Ram said he's going to add it to his collection. It's like, hmm, he is someone that has a lot of awards then. And so, of course, I had decided that he was some sort of sports announcer, um, sportscaster, but I couldn't really decide on which one I thought perhaps he was. Um, I had narrowed it down to a couple or several. <laughs> and Kate Hudson said she's cheering him on, and she told him to um, hit it out of the par park, I think is probably what she said, knock it out of the park. Um, so for a while, I decided it was her brother, Oliver Hudson, or Chris Gronkowski. The way he was, he carried himself and was acting made me think of Rob Gronkowski. So I was like, well, maybe it's his brother, Chris. Um, and, um, Chris was on Family Guy at one point. And then I was like, um, no, no, no. I think it's Matthew McConaughey who played a football coach in We Are Marshall because him and Kate Hudson have been in several movies together. So I'm like, it must be Matthew McConaughey, right? Um, but I'm still in the back of my head thinking he has to be some sort of sports announcer. But do they even give awards for that? Like, I don't I don't know how that works. Um, I watch a lot of sports, but I don't know. I don't watch enough awards shows to know if they give out awards for that, you know. Um, so I was really stumped by who he could be. And then next to perform... Um, the last one for this episode was Thingamabob of Team Cuddly, and he performed Perfect by Ed Sheeran, and I don't think that I knew that's what that song was called, um, actually, but he, I thought, did the best performance of the night, and his mega clue, I wrote this weird here, his mega clue was Shields. He's ready for battle. He said he went for his trident backstage, but still wanted to rock these shields to show America he's ready for battle. And he really stressed the word battle, which takes me again back to wrestling. And, I, you know, his voice being so familiar for a while had me going, well, maybe he's Jay-Z because I'm pretty sure that he's the one that I had found clues. Um, if I can even find. Yes, he's the one that I found. Um, he said that he grew up with the Rock Nation. <laughs> Excuse me, and Jay-Z started a pro music production company that's called Rock Nation, R-O-C Nation, which Jaden Smith is in. Um... And, of course, Jay-Z himself. Excuse me. Um, I'm trying to find... I have the other ones that I wrote down here. Uh, I think that says Jay Park. Lil, Lil Uzi Vert. Lil Uzi Vert. Um, Yo Gotti. Money Bag Yo. J. Cole, who I've heard of, Big Sean, and oh, so many more, <coughs> like DJ Khaled, T.I., Jadakiss, Casanova, and even a guy named, that goes by Mustard. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny, but anyway, um, 
because of the rock clue and he is the one that's initial clue was the rock and the shields that he had on there um i was looking up stuff about the avengers as the judges were thinking you know um the avengers stuff that has to do with rocks and shields and what i found um was the character korg um who is in avengers um, oh, I can't think of one. He's in Avengers Endgame, I believe it is. And there's a certain guy that plays for him who I don't really know who he is. And he's also in Thor Ragnarok and Thor Love and Thunder, which is coming out in 2022. And the guy that plays for him in both of those movies is named Taika Waititi. And he was on the show that Jimmy Fallon is hosting where they have celebrities go on there and they have to sing to perform against each other and see which team wins. Um, and I'm pretty sure that he was on there with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, ironically. And I'm thinking that they're the ones that went up against Kate and Oliver Hudson on there, but I wouldn't swear to it. But I kept thinking that his voice was super, super familiar. And I kept thinking the same thing about Cyclops. And I'm like, hmm. I'm thinking Cyclops is Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who is on that show, and I'm thinking Thingamabob is Taika, what, Taika, <laughs> Taika Waititi, who played for Korg on those movies and was also on there because I've heard him sing on there, and he did a great job, they both did. So, and he's six foot tall, which is what Nick Cannon is. But it's always so hard to tell if they have lifts in their boots or not. Um, and when Dionne Warwick was on there, she's like 5'7". And she looked like she must have been 5'3 or something. <coughs> so who knows what kinds of camera tricks they're doing and such. But so these performers were the ones that left from last week's show. Um, from episode one they were the four that survived episode one the two with the least votes for the favorite had to go head to head in a duel they ended up being ram and firefly she walked off the stage following the announcement and you remember she had that crown clue um that had me thinking maybe she was <coughs> a pageant queen maybe someone that had been miss america or something along that line um, and I'm like, well, she sure is throwing a hissy fit. She, I don't, I don't know, you know, but anyway, um, she seemed to kind of, well, I know she said she was under a lot of pressure because she's the only one left for team good. And I got to thinking about it and she was the only female to compete in the group that she is in. So that's a lot of pressure also. Um, but whenever they came back from the commercial, there was a tumbleweed that was in the scenery on the stage and it got stuck. It got caught on Nick's feet, which was kind of funny, but also kind of dangerous at the same time. But he managed to get it off of there. And Firefly did come back, of course. <coughs> um, it occurred to me, perhaps she had to go potty. Things happen. <laughs> um, anyway, so the person who was unmasked was... Spoiler alert, the ram. Yep, I didn't agree with that, but I was glad to see who he was. Um, I stuck with Matthew McConaughey, even though I still had in the back of my head going, he, the clues, you know, him saying that he's used to telling stories under the lights points to him being some sort of an announcer, um, sports announcer rather than a football player or an actor. But I'm like, you know, he played for a coach, and he has all sorts of awards. So I went ahead and went with Matthew McConaughey, because I tend to do that sort of stuff. Stick to my guns. Anyhow, um, who he turned out to be was famous announcer Joe Buck. Um, he's a sports announcer for Fox, has been for at least 20 years. And they, they told us what quite a few of the clues for him meant. So the antlers referred to his last name, of course, because a buck has antlers. Um, 
the Hamlet by Macbeth thing equaled play by play, which I'm surprised I didn't figure that one out. Um, because I was talking about I'm calling the plays, but like, duh, I couldn't figure that one out. So the putting the quarters into the piggy bank that said quarter return was because his co-anchor for the past 20 years on Fox is quarterback Troy Aikman. And it's interesting because Troy Aikman was one of the ones that I looked at as an announcer to try to figure out whether or not that was who the person was. But anyhow, um, and of course the horse was a nod to his early career calling horse races. And he, as I said, announces for Fox football. And his dad was a sports announcer who announced baseball games. Um, so that was very, very interesting to find out. And I'm looking so forward to the next one and seeing who it is. And I'm trying to figure out, like, um, I'm, I feel like they're trying to do it more like they did the original shows. And I'm trying to remember because I kind of feel like on there they split them into three groups of like five or six people or so. Um, I think it was three groups of five, though. And I feel like they narrowed those groups down to two people until they had like six left but I could be wrong about that they might have narrowed it down to one person for each group but I wish there was a way that they could do it where like say they have all 15 of them perform on three different episodes and then they have people vote and then they um put like the three worst ones competing against each or three with the least votes I shouldn't say worst because a lot of times they're all good but the three with the least amount of votes for favorite they have compete against each other and um the one that gets least votes from that then goes home if they could do it that way then they would all be competing against each other instead of some of them never competing against each other at all but i still enjoy this show regardless of how they do it and i'll continue watching it and hopefully you guys will too I'm going to go for now. Um, I am going to make another video and I'm going to probably post that one before I post this one. But anyway, everyone have a great whatever time of night or day it is in your part of the world. Stay safe and stay positive.